Hello everyone, welcome back to you all in this new video where we are going to see the manual approach for the design of shear wall. This complete problem we are going to solve in a five important steps. In the first step, we will see the problem statement and classification of the wall section as per IS 13920-2016. In the next step, we will see the design for the shear reinforcement and the longitudinal reinforcement in your shear wall. In the third step, we will see the check for the necessity of the boundary element in the shear wall. In the fourth step, we will do the design for the boundary element for the flexure and shear. Finally, in the last step, we will see the scheduling and detailing of the shear wall in respect of your design results. For better understanding of everything, you have to watch this video till the end. And if you are interested in the field of structural design and you are new on this channel, so we are continuously uploading this kind of videos. So please subscribe this channel and share this video with all of your friends and press the bell icon to get every notification. Now let's start the design. So first of all, try to understand the problem statement. So here we have to design a shear wall of G plus 2 RCC building where the length of this shear wall is 4000 mm and the thickness of the shear wall here it is given as 250 mm. So we have to use the material for the designing of this shear wall as 25 as a grade of concrete and FE415 as a grade of steel. The height of the shear wall given as 9 meter. Here in this table, the analysis results are actually present in a particular load combination. So in a combination of dead load plus live load plus earthquake load, in this particular load combination, analysis result is showing that axial load in the shear wall is 2860 kN. So the bending moment in this shear wall is given as 5730 kN meter. And the shear force in this shear wall under this particular load combination is 775 kN. So in respect of all these analysis values, we have to design our shear wall. Now to solve this complete problem, we are going to follow all the recommendation were made by IS 13920-2016 especially for the design of your shear wall. So when you come to the page number 14 of this code, so you are getting the special section for the design of special shear wall. So under this section, different clauses are actually given. In respect of all these clauses, you can design your shear wall very well. Now, in the first step, I would like to write the given data. So in respect of your problem statement, first you would like to write the data that will be important for doing the design. So here total height of the wall given as 9 meter that I'm going to write here as 9000 mm. The length of this wall is given as 4000 mm. So that I'm going to write here as 4000 mm. The total thickness of the shear wall is given as 250 mm. So first of all, we are going to check whether it is shear wall or not in respect of your IS1392 total recommendation. So IS1392 has defined that if the minimum ratio of length to its width or its thickness if it is equal to or greater than 4 then only we can call it as it is the shear wall if the ratio of length of the wall divided by thickness of the wall if this ratio is less than 4 then you cannot call this as shear wall so to make this as shear wall this ratio should be greater than 4 so that i am going to check in our problem so here it is given that length of the wall is 4000 so 4000 divided by your thickness of the wall thickness of the wall here it is given as 250 so if you are going to calculate the value you are getting this ratio as 16 and which is obviously greater than 4 so obviously it is the shear wall but in any of the situation if you are getting this ratio less than of 4 so it will not be a shear wall it will be your normal column so this is what the first recommendation and clause were given in your IS13920-2016 in the section of the shear wall design. One more clause is there. The minimum thickness of the special shear wall should not be less than of 150 mm. In no any case, you are allowed to take the shear wall thickness less than of 150 mm. So in our proposed example, the thickness of the shear wall here it is given as 250 mm. So that is also we are as per the codal recommendation. Now thereafter, we would like to calculate effective depth of the shear wall. Now why it is need to calculate this effective depth of the shear wall? Because when you are going to calculate the nominal shear tau v in your shear wall, at that time we need to have the effective depth of the shear wall. And where the formula for effective depth of, for the shear wall calculation is given, that we will get from your IS13920. So in the section of design for the shear force, here in this section, when you are going to calculate the nominal shear, there is needed to put the value of effective depth of the shear wall. 
So to calculate the effective depth of the shear wall, we need to multiply your actual length of the shear wall with the factor of 0.8. So when you are going to do this calculation, you are getting the effective depth of the shear wall. So that I am going to do here in the calculation as for the effective depth of the shear wall. So just put uh, the value of 0.8 multiplied by total length of the shear wall. So we are getting the effective depth of the shear wall along the length of the shear wall. Effective depth is available is how much? 3200 mm. Thereafter, we actually have to calculate the factored values. So here in the problem statement under this particular load combination, we actually have given all these service values or in another way you can say that all these are the unfactored values. So we have to multiply it by the factor as 1.2 to get the factored value. So here 1.2 multiplied by 5730 for getting the ultimate bending moment. So when you are going to multiply with 1.2, we are getting the factored value as 6876 kilonewton meter. This is a factored bending moment. Now next, I would like to calculate the factored shear force. So to calculate the factored shear force, the formula will equal to VU is equal to 1.2 multiplied by service shear force. So service shear force here it is given as 775 kilonewton. So I am going to multiply 775 kilonewton multiplied by 1.2. So we are getting the factored shear force as 930 kilonewton. As we earlier discussed that your thickness of the shear wall should not be less than of 150 mm in any of the case. So here the thickness of the shear wall we have given that 250 mm which is greater than 150 mm. So we are as per the IS-13920-2016 clause number 10.1.2 we are correct. Now in the second part of the section first we have to see the section classification of the shear wall. So as per IS-13920-2016 there is a recommendation for deciding the type of the shear wall. So that classification depends on the height of the wall divided by length of the wall ratio. So when this ratio is less than of 1, at that time you have to classify that shear wall as a Scott shear wall. But in a situation when the height of the wall divided by length of the wall ratio, if it is in between of the value of 1 and 2, at that time you have to define that as intermediate walls. But in a situation when height of the wall divided by length of the wall, this ratio if it is greater than 2, at that time you have to call that shear wall as a cylindrical walls. So we have to check in our proposed example what type of the section of the shear wall is there. So our height of the wall is 9000 mm and length of the wall is 4000 mm. So if you are going to calculate this ratio, so we are getting the value as 2.25 which is greater than 2. So as per the third recommendation, when height of the wall divided by length of the wall ratio is greater than 2, the type of the wall is going to become cylinder wall. So I am going to call it as, hence it is the cylinder wall. Now in the second step, we have to do the design for the shear wall, especially for the flexor and shear. So for better understanding of the design of the shear wall for flexor and shear, we have to discuss some important concept. So actually this is what the 3D view of your shear wall. This is what in plan view of your shear wall. Actually your shear wall is having the two axes. One is your major axis. Another one is your minor axis. So this is axis 3, 3 is your major axis and axis 2, 2 is your minor axis. So actually the stiffness of the shear wall about the axis 3, 3 will be very high in comparison of the axis 2, 2. Why it is because if suppose you are going to apply the load in this direction. So the resisting depth available this much. This is what very larger depth is available to resist this lateral load. But when you are coming to talk about the load application in this direction. So very small depth available to resist this load. That's why about the axis 3, 3 the available depth is very high. But when you come to talk about the axis 2, 2. So resisting depth is available only this much. So that's why this shear wall is having the very high stiffness about the axis 3, 3 and very less stiffness about the axis 2, 2. That's why this shear wall normally when you are going to apply the load over the structure, this shear wall is attracting the lateral forces in this direction only. Mainly when you are going to see any model and if you are going to see the shear wall 
to which it is going to be subjected the load. So lateral load is going to be act in this direction because in plan stiffness of this shear wall is very high. This is called as what? In plan direction of stiffness. So in this direction the stiffness is very high. But if suppose I am going to apply the load in this direction. So if the stiffness out of plane is very small. This is the direction of out of plane. This is the direction of in plane. So stiffness of the shear wall in in plane direction is very high and the stiffness of the shear wall in out of plane direction is very less. That's why this shear wall will be subjected to the lateral force in this direction. Hope that you all understood about the stiffness concept. So just try to understand what are the different types of the reinforcement will be present in your shear wall. So in shear wall there will be two types of the reinforcement will be present. One is your longitudinal reinforcement or the main reinforcement that is going to be provided along the height of the shear wall. So this is called as what main reinforcement or flexural reinforcement in your shear wall. But your shear wall will not be subjected to only this main reinforcement or flexural reinforcement. This shear wall will also be subjected to the lateral reinforcement or shear reinforcement also which is going to tie all these main bars. So this is called as what lateral reinforcement or shear reinforcement. So whatever the load is going to act in this direction, it is actually the shear force. It is actually going to create the shear stresses in your shear wall. So to resist this shear force, to resist this lateral force, we need to provide the reinforcement. That will be what your shear reinforcement. And you have to provide this shear reinforcement in horizontal direction over the plane of your shear wall. If you are not getting this concept, just try to understand the concept of the beam design. So for the case of the beam design, what we are doing, suppose this is your beam and this beam is subjected to the what? Shear forces along the uh, transverse direction. So the force coming from the top and in resist of this applied force, the shear forces are going to develop in your beam. So to resist these shear forces, we are providing the reinforcement in that direction, in the same direction. Your direction of the shear force is upward. And in the same direction, we are going to provide the shear reinforcement for the case of the beam. This is what your shear reinforcement. Likewise, in case of the shear wall, the same concept is there. Compare the shear wall with your beam. So in case of the shear wall, the lateral load is going to act in this direction. So to, to resist this shear force, to resist this lateral load, we need to provide the reinforcement in this direction as lateral reinforcement. And this is going to be provided overall the height of the shear wall. In this way we have to provide the shear reinforcement. So actually the resisting section for this lateral force, this shear force is actually this much. So for doing the calculation you have to consider the width of the section, width of the shear wall and we are going to consider the 1 meter height of this shear wall and this thickness. So this is going to become what resisting section for the shear force or lateral forces. We are going to do the calculation for 1 meter of span. So that's why here first we are going to do the design for the shear. And when you come to talk about the design for the longitudinal reinforcement, for the main reinforcement, at that time we have to consider this section. Because whatever the load you are going to apply over the shear wall as a lateral load, so due to that lateral load, the moment is going to be developed about the axis 3-3. Because it is the major axis, your shear wall is going to be subjected to the moment as major moment about the axis 3-3. And to resist that movement, we need to provide the longitudinal reinforcement in your shear wall. That will be your main reinforcement, the reinforcement along the height of the shear wall. So to resist the shear forces, we have to provide the horizontal reinforcement. And to resist the movement or to maintain the flexural behavior of your shear wall, we have to provide the main reinforcement or vertical reinforcement. So first here we are going to do the calculation for the shear forces. So here the same thing is shown. It is what the shear wall. So in a shear wall, this is your main reinforcement. This is your longitudinal reinforcements. And to resist the shear forces, to resist these lateral forces, we need to provide the shear reinforcement that will be what? Horizontal over the height of your shear wall. In this 3D view, you can understand it very well. So this is what? This is the for 1 meter height of the wall or you can say for 1 meter depth of this wall and 
for the complete thickness so this is going to become resisting section so for this one meter height of the wall and this thickness of the wall we are going to do the calculation okay so first of all i would like to see how much the nominal shear is going to develop in your shear wall so to do the nominal shear calculation the ultimate shear force divided by thickness of wall multiplied by effective depth of the wall so if you are going to do the calculation for this value you are getting the nominal stress in the shear wall is going to be developed as 1.16 newton per mm square but we have to compare it with the value of 0.25 square root of fck if you are going to do this calculation we are getting the value of 1.25 so as per the recommendation of is 13920 2016 clause number 10.1.7 so what recommendation is there let me see that so when you go to see is 13920 so there is what the recommendation the reinforcement shall be provided into two curtains within the cross section of the wall with each curtain having the bars running along the vertical and horizontal direction so here it is mentioned that when the stress is going to become more than that of 0.25 of square root of fck if this condition is going to be satisfied or if the wall thickness is more than of 200 mm in both of the situation you have to provide the reinforcement for the shear as well as for the longitudinal as on both of the faces you have to provide the shear reinforcement on both of the face plus longitudinal reinforcement on both of the faces so that is what the recommendation based on the stresses how much the stresses is going to be developed so here i am going to check in our calculation how much the nominal shear stress is going to be developed here the nominal stress is what 1.16 and the value of 0.25 under root of fck is 1.25 so actually here it is not needed to provide the reinforcement on both of the face if you are going to compare these two stresses values but now one more another criteria is there where if the thickness of the shear wall is equal to or greater than 200 mm at that time also you have to provide the reinforcement on both of the faces as we earlier have seen so here nominal shear is less than of your the value of 0.25 under root of fck as 1.25 newton per mm square so actual nominal shear is less than of this limit so if you are going to see only this criteria so it is failing in respect of this criteria it is not needed to provide the shear reinforcement on two faces as well as vertical reinforcement on two faces but another criteria we are going to see that is in respect of your thickness of the shear wall so thickness of the shear wall in our proposed example is 250 mm so actually it is greater than of 200 mm so that's why here we are going to conclude that we have to provide the reinforcement on two faces we have to provide the reinforcement in two curtains for shear reinforcement as well as for the vertical or longitudinal reinforcement now in the next step we are going to see what is the limit given by your is code for the selection of diameter of bar and spacing of the reinforcement so if you are going to see is 13920 2016 clause number 10.1.8 so it is defining that what diameter of bar you can take for your shear wall so largest diameter of longitudinal steel bars used in any part of the wall shall not exceed 1/10 of the thickness of that particular part of the shear wall so overall we can say that you are not allowed to take a diameter of bar greater than of thickness divided by 10 so if we are going to put the thickness for our proposed example as 250 divided by 10 so maximum limit for the longitudinal reinforcement diameter is 25 mm so in any of the case you are not allowed to take the diameter of bar more than of 25 mm so here i am going to say that minimum diameter of bar we will take as 12 mm for the longitudinal reinforcement and maximum diameter of bar we are getting the limit as 25 mm so in the range of 12 to 25 mm you can take the diameter of main reinforcement vertical reinforcement in your shear wall now what is the limit for the maximum spacing for both shear reinforcement as well as vertical reinforcement or longitudinal reinforcement so in the next clause of is 13920 here it is mentioning that what should be the maximum spacing okay so the maximum spacing of vertical or horizontal reinforcement shall not exceed smaller of the following so very first criteria 1/5 of horizontal length of the wall second criteria 3 times the thickness of the web of the wall and 450 mm 
So among these three values, you have to consider the minimum one. And in respect of that minimum one, your spacing should not be more than of that. So we are going to do this same calculation in our proposed example. So very first criteria is one fifth of length of your wall. So as we know that our length of wall is 4000 divided by 5. So we are getting 800 mm. So your spacing should not be more than of 800 mm for both vertical reinforcement as well as your horizontal shear reinforcements. Okay. So 800 mm. Second, three times the thickness of your wall. Three times multiplied by thickness is 250, 750. In no any case, your spacing should not be 750 mm. Now third criteria, 450 mm. So you have to consider minimum of all these three values. So after looking at all these three values, we are getting the minimum value as 450. So my spacing of vertical reinforcement and shear reinforcement should not be more than of 450 mm in any of the case. So these two criteria we have seen as for the diameter as for the spacing. Now next uh, I would like to see how much the maximum critical shear is going to be developed in your concrete section of the shear wall. So maximum shear formula is what? 0.63 under root of FCK. So 0.63 our grade of concrete is what? 25. So after doing the calculation we are getting the value of tau C max as 3.15 Newton per mm square. So nominal shear value we are having how much is 1.16 and maximum shear value we are getting as 3.15. On later stage we need to have these two values. Now next we have to find out how much the horizontal minimum reinforcement is needed to provide in your shear wall. So the formula is given in your IS code as 0 0.0025 plus point inside bracket of height of wall divided by length of wall minus 2 multiplied by reinforcement present in the web minus 0.0025. So if you are going to see this equation in your IS code, so you will find some changes. Just look at your IS 13920 for the case of the cylinder wall as our shear wall is a cylinder wall. That's why we are going to see the third recommendation for the cylinder walls. So here if you are going to see horizontal minimum reinforcement, the formula is exactly same that we have written in our calculation. But one change is there. Here I have written reinforcement in the web but in the code here it is written that horizontal reinforcement in the shear wall. So why these changes is there try to understand. So IIT Kanpur has recommended many modification in your IS code. In all of that modification one modification is recommended that instead of this horizontal reinforcement there should be a value of vertical reinforcement in the web of the shear wall. So if you are going to put uh, the reinforcement in the web of the shear wall as vertical reinforcement, so that is what the minimum point not, not 25. So if you are going to put this recommended value in this equation, so this point not, not 25 minus point not, not 25, obviously this part of the equation is going to become what zero. That's why horizontal minimum reinforcement we are considering as point not, not 25 only. So we are going to consider as per the recommendation of IIT Kanpur. That's why in a calculation we are going to consider horizontal minimum reinforcement as 0 0.0025. Here I am going to consider diameter of horizontal reinforcement or shear reinforcement as 8 mm dia. So total area of reinforcement required for a 1 meter height of the wall. The calculation the resisting section we are considering this much thickness of the wall and this length of the wall 1 meter. So here 0 0.0025 multiplied by 250 overall thickness of the shear wall multiplied by 1 meter consideration of height of the wall from the top. So it is giving the 625 mm area of reinforcement required per meter running this length and we have to provide this much reinforcement in two curtains or in two layers. Earlier we have seen that we have to provide the reinforcement in two faces or uh, we have to provide the reinforcement in two curtain on both of the faces actually. So here we have to find out how much the spacing is required to provide to satisfy this much uh, reinforcement. So as we earlier have decided that 8 mm diameter of shear reinforcement will provide 8 mm diameter of horizontal reinforcement we have to provide. So spacing required is what unit area at a particular proposed section unit area of 8 mm diameter bar at a section multiplied by 
consider a span. So we are going to do the calculation for 1 meter height. So 1 meter 1000 divided by total horizontal area of reinforcement required as 625. So at a particular section, if you are going to see here, this is what actually the horizontal reinforcement, horizontal ring. So it is having the two legs because we are going to provide the reinforcement on two faces. So that's why at a one section, two bars are present. That's why unit area is going to be multiplied by 2. So 8 mm diameter having the unit area is 50.26. So we are going to multiply this 50.26 with a 2 because two legs or two sides reinforcements are available for resisting the shear. So that's why 50.26 multiplied by 2 totally is going to become around to be as 100 mm square multiplied by 1000 divided by 625. So you are getting the spacing recommendation as 160.832 but we are going to round down this by 25 mm. So lower value is going to become what 150 mm. We are not going to provide as 160 mm spacing of your horizontal reinforcement. We are going to provide the spacing as 150 mm center to center as horizontal bars. 8 mm diameter of bar at a spacing of 150 mm center to center. So this is what the final design for the horizontal reinforcement. So we are going to put the horizontal bars in your shear walls with a spacing of 150 mm center to center. Between the two horizontal reinforcement, we are going to provide the spacing as what? 150 mm center to center like this 150 mm center to center so hope that you all understood how to design for the horizontal reinforcement in the shear wall now after the complete design of the horizontal reinforcement we have to do the design for the longitudinal reinforcement or you can say for the vertical reinforcement so here first we need to find out how much the percentage of vertical reinforcement is needed to provide in the shear wall for that we need to look at as 13920 2016 so here for the cylinder wall section, we have to provide the reinforcement as 0.8% of reinforcement in the boundary element of the shear wall and 0.25% of reinforcement in the web of the shear wall and when it is not decided what type of the section is there, so the net area of reinforcement we have to provide in respect of this equation. So for better understanding of these recommendations, we need to understand the sectional arrangement of your shear wall. So shear wall may be of different types in respect of its uh, section. Your shear wall may be of uniform section. So there will be no consideration of boundary element. And in another situation, your shear wall may require to provide the boundary element. So it's all depends on the design requirement whether it is needed to provide the boundary element or not. So after doing the calculation, we are coming to the conclusion that whether it is needed to provide the boundary element or not. So if your geometry of the shear wall is like this, at that time we need to find out the reinforcement, vertical reinforcement for the boundary element separately, vertical reinforcement for the web area separately. But here we have not any clue what section geometry of our shear wall will be that's why we are going to adopt the net area of vertical reinforcement equation for finding out the percentage of reinforcement so in this equation what is written try to understand 0 0.0025 plus 0 0.01375 multiplied by thickness of wall divided by length of wall if you are going to put all this value in this equation so we are getting the value of percentage of vertical reinforcement as point 3359. This much minimum percentage of reinforcement as a vertical reinforcement we need to provide in the shear wall. But we are going to stop the discussion about the vertical reinforcement design and detailing. Here we are going to understand whether with this percentage of reinforcement what is the shear resisting capacity of the section. After getting the minimum percentage of reinforcement in the shear wall as vertical reinforcement we can find out the how much shear resisting capacity of your section and for that we need to look at IS 456-2000 table number 19 page number 73. So the value of critical shear resisting capacity of the section is depends on the two parameters. One is your percentage of reinforcement vertical or main reinforcement and grade of concrete. So both of the things we are having our percentage of reinforcement is how much See, our percentage of reinforcement is 0.3359. This comes in between the range of 0.25 to 
and 0.5 and the value of tau c for m25 grade and for 0.25 percent is 0.36 and for 0.5 value the value of tau c is 0.49 but we need to do the calculation for 0.3359 for that i am going to do the linear interpolation and if you are going to do the linear interpolation we are getting the value of tau c as 0.404 so that i am going to put here as tau c value as 0.404 newton per mm square or you can say mpa so that i am going to compare this tau c value with a tau v and tau c max so here tau v as 1.16 we earlier have done the calculation for this so tau v is equal to 1.16 newton per mm square also we have calculated the value of tau c max so tau c max is 3.15 so i am going to compare both of these and here we are getting the tau v is less than of tau c max that's why no need to revise the design in any of the design if tau v value you are getting more than of tau c max at that time you need to revise the design you need to increase the section size of the shear wall you need to increase the percentage of reinforcement right but here it is not needed to revise the design our design is what okay but further check we need to apply in respect of tau v and tau c so we are going to compare the tau v and tau c so tau v is 1.16 we know very well and tau c we just have calculated as 0.404 so we are getting tau v is greater than tau c hence that we need to do the design for the shear shear reinforcement is needed to provide for resisting the extra shear stresses but earlier we already have provided the horizontal reinforcement horizontal reinforcement is actually resisting the shear forces so we have done the already design for the shear reinforcement or horizontal reinforcement so that's why we are going to perform the checks whether the provided shear reinforcement or provided horizontal reinforcement is capable of resisting the shear stresses or not so for that here we need to first find out how much the shear forces is going to generate which will be the responsibility of the shear forces to resist so vus is equal to tau v minus tau c multiplied by thickness of the wall multiplies by effective depth of the wall if you are going to do the calculation for this we are getting the value of shear force taken by the shear stress as 603.2 kN this much force is needed to resisted by your shear steel or shear reinforcement or horizontal reinforcement now to resist this much shear force as 603.2 kN whether our provided horizontal reinforcement is okay or not we are going to do the check for that whether our provided shear reinforcement is capable of resisting this much shear force or not we are going to find that okay so for that we need to look at is 13920 2016 clause number 10.2.3 so when i am going to see this so here in this b clause there is a given of equation of horizontal area of reinforcement as equal to ultimate shear force divided by 0.87 multiplied by fy effective depth of the shear wall divided by spacing of the shear reinforcement so after applying this equation you can find out the value so that i am going to use here in the calculation as h equal to ultimate shear force divided by 0.87 fy into depth of the wall effective depth of the wall okay so that is what dw divided by sv is spacing of the shear reinforcement so if you are going to put all the value here by taking this sv under this ah okay so ah divided by sv is equal to vus divided by 0.87 fy effective depth of the shear wall this is not the overall depth as it is we have to show as dw effective depth of the wall now after putting all this value 603.2 into 10 raised to 3 or you can multiply it by 1000 divided by 0.87 multiplied by 415 as grade of steel multiplied by effective depth of the wall as 3200 so ah divided by sv ratio we are getting as 0.522 as required now we are going to check with our provided area of horizontal reinforcement divided by provided spacing so we have provided the 8 mm diameter of shear reinforcement at a spacing of 150 mm center to center that you can see here in our provision so we have provided the 8 mm diameter of bar at a spacing of 
150 mm center to center as a horizontal bars or shear reinforcements. So that I am going to see here AH 2 times 50.26 because two legs are there we know very well that's what 2 times unit area of 8 mm diameter of bar. So 2 times 50.26 divided by 150 is spacing of the shear reinforcement. So we are getting this ratio as 0 0.670 and required is what 0.522. So our provided area of reinforcement is more than that of the required area of the reinforcement for resisting this much shear force as 603.2 kN. Okay, that's why our design for the shear is safe. Hence, provided horizontal reinforcement is safe to resist the shear force or shear. Now, we are going to provide the vertical reinforcement. So vertical reinforcement will equal to 0.3359 percentage. This much percentage of reinforcement we have to provide as vertical reinforcement in two curtain or we can say on two faces. Here we have calculated the percentage of vertical reinforcement. In, in respect of this demand, we are going to provide the vertical reinforcement. So it is going to become 0 0.003359 multiplied by total thickness. Total thickness of the shear wall is how much? 250 mm multiplied by 1000 span this is 1 meter span resisting section is what this much in plan section thickness and length of the wall so 250 multiplied by 1000 so area of reinforcement required as 839.75 mm square per meter this length of the wall and we have to provide this much area of reinforcement in two layers or in two curtains two layers means what half of this area of reinforcement we have to provide on this space half of this reinforcement we have to provide on this space that is called as what two curtains or two layers so actually here i am going to provide the diameter of bar for the vertical reinforcement as not 10 mm diameter i am going to provide here as what 12 mm diameter of vertical reinforcement so unit area of vertical reinforcement as 12 mm diameter of bar is going to become what 113.09 but on one phase this much reinforcement will be there if i am going to provide one more bar on the other phase so total at one section how much area is going to become 113.09 multiplied by two times because on this phase on this phase multiplied by over a one meter length of the shear wall one meter divided by total area how much the total area is required 839.75 after doing this calculation we are getting the spacing to maintain at one phase as 269.36 that's why we are going to provide 12 mm diameter of bar at a spacing of 250 mm center to center as vertical reinforcement contained within the horizontal bar it means that always your horizontal reinforcement will be on covering side and your vertical reinforcement will be on inner side vertical reinforcement will be on inner side and horizontal reinforcement will be on covering side and that covering is called as what contained within horizontal bars hope that you all understood how to design for the vertical reinforcement and how to design for the horizontal reinforcement so here we did the calculation for horizontal and vertical reinforcement together Welcome you all in ISO certified life training program. It has RCDC and Excel that makes you professional structural engineer. In this training program, you will learn everything about it has and RCDC from basic to advanced. Real life project of medium rise structure from architecture plan to final design sheet. Real life project of high rise structure with all advanced topics. Design of the structural elements using advanced Excel sheets. Have a look over the features of this training. Very live classes conducted by expert for one and a half hour. Recording of every session with lifetime access can interact with expert anytime 24 by 7 exposure to real practice iso certification of training completion it's five star rated training program till now more than thousand participants have benefited from this training program now you are the next now in this step third we have to check for the necessity of the boundary element so we actually have to find out whether it is needed to provide the boundary element in your shear wall or not but before of that, it is very important for you all to understand why it is needed to provide the boundary element and what is the concept of considering the boundary element in the case of the design of the shear wall. So as I earlier discussed that the section of your shear wall will be of two types. One is uniform section of the shear wall. So from one end to another end, the size or section of the shear wall will be same. It is not going to change. But in another situation, 
there may be other type of the shear wall where at its both ends you will get the increased size of the shear wall at its both end or in another way if the section size is suppose is not going to change then what will happen at the end we are going to provide the increased percentage of reinforcement either to like increase the strength of end part of the shear wall what we are doing sometimes we are increasing the section size of the shear wall or sometimes we are doing what increasing the percentage of reinforcement at the end sections of the shear wall or sometimes what we are doing we are providing the both things we are increasing the section size as well as we are increasing the percentage of reinforcement in the ends of the shear walls at the end sections of the shear wall we are increasing both the things section size as well as we are increasing the percentage of reinforcement in comparison of the middle portion or in comparison of the web area of the shear wall so here we are trying to understand in detail why it is needed to do all these kind of things increasing the section increasing the percentage of reinforcement so here actually we need to find out whether in this proposed example is needed to provide the boundary element or not but before of that i would like to discuss some important topics some important things in respect of boundary element so when you are going to see any shear wall which is subjected to the lateral load that may be of a, like say earthquake loading that may be of any wind loading whatever the lateral load to which your shear wall is going to be subjected so suppose this is my shear wall which is subjected to the lateral load so due to action of this lateral load what will happen your shear wall especially is going to be deformed in this direction and due to this deformation the moment is going to be developed about the axis 3 3 that is your major axis and 2 2 is your minor axis so very simple response will be there under the application of this lateral load your shear wall is going to be deformed and due to that moment is going to be developed in this direction and your shear wall is subjected to the axial load, load as well as lateral load so due to this axial load stresses is going to be developed in the shear wall and due to this lateral load what is going to be happen your shear wall is going to be subjected to the moment about the major axis as 3 3 so at the end if you are going to see the behavior of the shear wall what is going to be happen your shear wall will be subjected to the compressive forces which is coming from the above floors so some part of this actual load is going to be transferred on the left portion of the shear wall and some part of this actual load is going to be transferred to the right portion of this shear wall and this is called as what uh, extreme fiber of the shear wall the end portion of these shear walls we are going to call it as what extreme fibers of the shear wall so to, due to this movement and due to this response of the shear wall under the application of this lateral loading what is going to be happen this part of the shear wall will be subjected to the compression it is under what compression as you can see and extension at the end of this shear wall will be so this part will be under the tension and this part will be under the compression and this stress is going to be developed as a resultant of development of this movement due to development of this movement what is going to be happen this part is going to be subjected to the compression this part is going to be subjected to tension so extreme fibers of this shear wall on right hand side is going to be subjected to the compression and this part is going to be subjected to the tension so due to this basic gravitational load some portion of this gravitational load or this compressive force is going to be act in downward direction for this extreme fiber on left hand side and for this right hand side extreme fiber some part of this actual load is going to be acting in downward direction so both of the load in downward direction both of the natures are compression but the stresses which is going to be developed due to the action of this movement due to this lateral load so what is happen this is what the compression so here is the compressive force is going to be developed as a resultant of this movement the compressive stresses is going to be developed in this portion at the extreme fiber on the right hand side of this shear wall but at the same time if you are going to see for the left portion so this edge is going to be subjected to the tension so here the tensile force is going to be developed as a resultant of uh, this movement so on the right hand side extreme fiber is what compression on the left hand side of this extreme fiber of this uh, shear wall tension is there so if you are going to take the sum of these two so here the resultant value you are getting as what tensile stresses and here is what the compressive pure compressive stresses is there this basic gravitational load is also compressive and the stress due to resultant of this movement 
that is also compressive so overall this part will be under the compression and this part may be in compression or may be in tension if uh, this tensile stress is what dominating in comparison of this compressive force so here tensile stress will be but in a situation this compressive force is dominating and this tensile force is not dominating so this will also be in compression so overall when your shear wall is going to be subjected to the lateral force in addition to the gravitational loading so what will happen at the edges or at the extreme fibers of this uh, shear wall there will be heavy stresses so when you are going to see the recommendation or tips uh, for the design of the shear wall we are given by the IIT Kanpur so here it is defined that what does mean the boundary element so under the large overturning moment effects uh, caused by the horizontal earthquake forces edges of the shear walls experiencing the high compressive and tensile stresses that I have explained right now the ends of the shear walls will be subjected to higher compressive stresses and tensile stresses what further here it is recommended to ensure that shear walls behaves in a ductile manner concrete in the wall end regions must be reinforced in a special manner to sustain these loads without of losing its strength so actually what we need to do in comparison of the middle portion of the shear wall the end portion of the shear wall is going to be subjected to the heavy stresses so in that situation what we need to do we need to either increase the section size of this portion or if you are not willing to increase the section size of the shear wall at its both ends then another option is that you can increase the percentage of reinforcement so either you can increase the percentage of reinforcement in the end regions or you can increase the section size or if very high intensity of the stresses are there in that situation you need to do both of the things you have to increase the percentage of reinforcement as well as you need to increase the section size of the shear wall at its both ends and increasing the section with the increased percentage of reinforcement at the ends of the shear walls called as what boundary element so here it is what clearly mentioned that the boundary element without increased thickness of the shear wall so but here stresses if suppose more than the limits so we are given by your is code we will see on later stage so if the stresses are beyond the limit at that time what we have to increase the percentage of reinforcement so whatever the reinforcement you are going to provide for the middle portion of the shear wall in comparison of that you have to increase the percentage of the reinforcement at the end of the shear wall so this is also one kind of the boundary element but actually we are not increasing the size at the ends here only we are going to increase the percentage of reinforcement but in another example if you are going to see so if the stresses are going to increase at the extreme fibers of this shear wall so what here we are going to increase the percentage of reinforcement as well as we are going to increase the section size of the shear wall so both of the things we are going to execute here and in this portion the longitudinal reinforcements as well as the shear reinforcements are going to increase at this end regions of the shear walls so this is what the concept of the boundary elements selection for the shear wall or necessity of the shear wall so for better understanding in what condition we have to provide the boundary element in your shear wall we need to look at the recommendation we are made by your is 13920 2016 so in this is 13920 2016 clause number 10.4 if you are going to see the clause for the boundary element c the boundary element shall be provided along the vertical boundaries of the walls when the extreme fiber compressive stresses in the wall exceed the limit of 0.2 fck if the stresses at the extreme fiber of your shear wall or at the edges of the ends of the shear walls if it is exceeding beyond of 0.2 fck at that time we have to increase the section size or we have to increase the percentage of reinforcement overall at the edges we have to provide the boundary element when the stresses are exceeding beyond the 0.2 fck so the same checks we are going to perform in our proposed example so here actually i am going to find out the factored area load how much total factored compressive load is there over your shear wall so here the load has given how much the total load is there let me show you total actual compressive load is 2860 so that i am going to put here as it is actually 2860 and if you are going to take the multiplication of 1.2 multiplied by 2860 
six zero. So you are getting the value as three four three two kilo newton. This much actual compressive force is there over your shear wall. Now. Stresses. How much stresses are going to be developed on this right hand side, extreme fiber or edge of the shear wall, and left edge of the shear wall? For this right and left portion, how much the stresses are going to be developed? So for that, what is the calculation? Pure actual force divided by area plus minus movement that is going to be developed about the axis three three divided by sectional modulus Z. B D is square by six. So here actually it is what thickness. Multiplied by length of the wall is square divided by six. This is the formula. So, like after doing this calculation, like if you are going to put the value of axial load into 10 raised to 3 to make in newton divided by area of the shear wall, 250 is overall thickness multiplied by length of the shear wall plus minus the total moment into 10 raised to 6 divided by 250 multiplied by length of the shear wall is square divided by six. So we are getting the value. As direct stress as 3.432 plus minus bending stress at the ends, which is going to be developed due to bending stress due to movement, due to movement effect, and due to direct stress. This is due to direct stress. This is a bending stress. Okay. So by making the addition of these two, we are getting the maximum stress as 13.746 MPa Newton per mm square. This is the first value we are getting as maximum compressive. On this right hand side, this is a positive value we are getting, and negative here the negative value we are getting minimum stress as minus six point eight eight two. So it is just giving the sign. So minimum value as six point eight two two we are getting maximum value of the stress we are getting thirteen point seven four six. But as we earlier have seen that as per IS one three nine two zero two thousand sixteen clause number ten point four point one the limiting stress is point two fck. So our characteristic strength of the concrete is 25. So 0.2 multiplied by 25, you are getting the value of 5 MPa. So you have to compare this 5 MPa with the maximum of these two value. So which one is the maximum? 13.746. Now compare this limiting value with the maximum value. So here we are getting the maximum value is greater than that of the your limiting value. That's why here we are going to conclude with the statement that here it is needed to Designed for the boundary elements. Hope that you all understood all the concept in respect of the boundary elements requirements or its necessity and the concept of how you can decide whether it is needed to provide the boundary element or not. Now, as per the above discussion, we have decided that we have to provide the boundary element in your shear wall. So I am going to consider the boundary element of size 250 by 500 in mm. So at both of the edges of the shear wall or at both of the ends of the shear wall. We are going to provide the boundary element of size 250 is in width and 0.5 meter in length. So from both of the side, if you are going to consider 0.5, 0.5, so remaining portion of the shear wall is going to become as 3 meter because the full span or full length of the shear wall as 4 meter. So if you are going to subtract 0.5 meter from both of the sides, so remaining span of the shear wall is going to become as 3 meter. So actually here we need to calculate how much the Area of reinforcement is present in your middle portion of the shear wall. Total vertical reinforcement, how much is present in your shear wall? That I have to calculate. So actually, that calculation we have to make as unit area of your vertical reinforcement. So earlier we had done the calculation for the uh, vertical reinforcement in the shear wall for one meter only. So here we have decided to provide 12 mm diameter of bar at a spacing of 250 mm center to center. So for a one meter of span, so that I am going to do the calculation here for knowing the total area of reinforcement for a one meter of span. So one one three point zero two multiplied by two. Why we are going to multiply it by two? Because the reinforcements are provided on both of the faces, on both of the in two curtains actually, and this reinforcement you are going to provide for a one meter. So for a one meter with a spacing of 250 mm center to center. So we are getting the total area of reinforcement for one meter of the span as 904.72 mm square for one meter. But actually here we need to calculate for full of the span as three meter. So in this span of this three meter of the shear wall, how much the total area of the vertical reinforcement is present? So this unit area you have to multiply with the three meter. Okay. 
So you are getting total area for this 3 meter span as 2714.16 mm square. Now actually here we have to calculate how much the moment resisting capacity of this central portion being presence of this much area of reinforcement. So how to do that? For that we need to look at IS13920 2016 Annex A. So when you are going to see this, so here the moment of resistance of rectangular shear wall section. So different cases are actually given here case A and case B. So in case first where if XU by LW is less than XU star by LW, if this condition is going to be satisfied in that situation, you have to use this equation to find out the moment resisting capacity of the your shear wall section MU. So different parameters first you need to find out lambda, percentage, phi, everything we have to find out first. Then only you can find out the XU by LW and XU star by LW. And then we have to compare these two to decide the case. Which case we have to adopt for finding out the MU value. Either you have to go with the first case, either you have to go with the second case. It depends on the these two values. So for that we are going to do the calculation here. First we will like to find out the percentage of reinforcement available. So total area of vertical reinforcement in the shear wall in its middle portion is present as 2714.16 mm square. This we earlier have calculated. Divide by total sectional area of the shear wall 250 by 4000. 250 is the thickness of the shear wall and the full span of the shear wall is 4 meter. So in this complete section of the shear wall, the percentage of this middle portion of the vertical reinforcement. Okay. So that is coming out to be 0.002746. Now lambda will equal to PU upon FCK TW LW. These all values or equations are actually given in your IS13920. So by referring this code, I am doing the calculation here. So total actual load is how much? 3432 into 10 raised to 3. This is also we earlier have calculated total axial compressive force as 3432 kilonewton. So that I am going to put here 3432 into 10 raised to 3 divided by 25 is the characteristic strength of your concrete, thickness of the shear wall multiplied by length of the shear wall. So we are getting the value of lambda as 0.1373. Now phi will equal to 0.87 Fy percentage of steel divided by Fck. If you are going to put all of these values, you are getting the value of phi as 0 0.0392. Now put all these values to find out XU by LW. So here XU by LW when you are going to see your code XQ by LW is a equal to phi plus lambda divided by 2 phi plus 0.36. This same formula we are going to implement here. So we are getting the value of XU by LW as 0.4026 and XU star by LW this value is coming out to be 0.6597 if you are going to put a 0.0035 divided by 0.0035 plus 0.87 multiplied by Fy by Es modulus of elasticity of steel and the yield strength of steel. So our grade of steel is what? Fe415. So that I am going to put here as 415 divided by 2 into 10 raised to 5 modulus of elasticity of your steel. So after doing the calculation you are getting the value as 0.6597. Now compare these two value. So we are getting that XU by LW is less than that of the XU star by LW. So due to this criteria, we are going to follow the first case and we are going to use this equation for finding out the moment resisting capacity of your shear wall section, especially the metal portion only. How much the moment resisting capacity of your metal portion is that actually we have to calculate. So with the further calculation, we have to find out the beta value. So beta value will equal to 0.87 Fy divided by 0 0.0035 multiplied by modulus elasticity of your steel. So if you are going to put all this value in this equation, so we are getting the value of beta as 0 0.5157. Put all these values in this equation to find out the moment resisting capacity of your section. So we are getting the value of moment resisting capacity of your section as 5859.48 kilonewton meter this much resisting capacity of your section. Now we actually want to calculate what net movement is there. So actually total movement that is going to be developed over your section is how much? See total factored movement is actually present here. 
6876 kN meter this is the total moment which is going to act over your shear wall and your shear wall is having the capacity only how much let's see 5859.48 so what about the net moment who will be responsible to carry this moment so actually this moment is going to be carried by your end boundary elements so we are going to put this moment to the boundary element and we are making the boundary element as more strength than that to carry this extra moments this extra moment we are carried by your boundary element so here i would like to calculate how much the fraction of your boundary element area in respect of total size of your shear wall 250 by 4000 thickness is what 250 and span of the shear wall is what 4000 okay so and boundary element we have consider as what 250 by 500 thickness is 250 and span is we are consider as 500 only okay so what is the fraction of area of your boundary element so 250 by 500 divided by 250 multiplied by 4000 so fraction of boundary element area is 0.125 and total compressive load over the shear wall is what 3432 kN now some part of this total axial compressive load as 3432 is going to be transferred to the boundary element area as we earlier had a discussion about the load distribution to your boundary element so whatever the axial compressive load is there the some part of this axial compressive load is going to be transferred to left and right side boundary elements and the moment stress is going to be transferred to the boundary elements as a compressive and tensile stresses tensile forces so these two stresses we have to find out for the boundary element so for that first we need to calculate how much the part of this compressive load is going to transfer to this side is going to transfer to this side so for that we need to multiply this total compressive load with the fraction of this boundary element area in respect of your total area of the shear wall so that we already have done the calculation the fraction of boundary element area is uh, 0.125 so we have to multiply this 0.125 with the total compressive load and after multiplying this two value we are getting the how much the load which is going to be transferred to your boundary elements so here the total axial compressive load is going to be transferred for the boundary element area as 429 only so on both of the sides suppose this is my shear wall on both of the side how much the compressive force is there that is what 429 kN now total force at the compression end of your boundary element so if you are going to see your shear wall i am going to say this is the compression side this is my tension side or you can say this is the right side and this is your left side so right side we are considering will undergo under the compression and left side will undergo under the tension so the total force at compression end of your boundary element so this side here how much the total force 429 kN which is going to be transferred due to the axial force plus due to the moment effect due to the resultant of this movement how much the axial force is going to be transferred to your boundary element so how you can calculate that so moment divided by lever arm the center to center distance between these two points so how much it will become so it is actually your 3 meter plus 0.25 from this side and 0.25 from this side so totally is going to become what 3.5 meter so distance between center to center of these two points loads as 3.5 meter so total moment divided by this lever arm between the two points as 3.5 meter so you are getting the value of the axial force going to be transferred to your boundary element due to this moment development okay so that i am going to do the calculation here total moment net moment is how much which is going to be transferred to your boundary element it is actually 1016.51 kN meter so that i am going to put here now lever arm distance between center to center of your boundary element that you can see in this figure your clear span of this middle portion is 3.5 meter and this is the center of your right side boundary element and left side boundary element is this so total span is going to become what 3.5 meter so we have to divide this moment which is going which is actually the net moment with the lever arm distance so it is going to become what 
1016.51 divided by 3.5 so you are getting the value of 719.43 so this much compressive force is going to act uh, at the right side of your boundary element at this side the total load is going to be transferred as 719.43 kN likewise we have to do the calculation for the left hand side so total force at, at tension end of your boundary element so compression due to the axial force is 429 so it is actually present here now at this time we have to subtract it we have to take the minus sign so one time we have to take as positive one times we have to take as negative so when you are taking it as negative so it is 1016.51 divided by 3.5 you are getting the value on the left hand side here we are getting 138.56 here we are getting final value or on the right hand side we are getting the final value as 719.43 Sometimes on the left hand side you are getting the negative value. It means that here the tension is what dominating at this portion net stress is what tension and on right hand side net stress is what compression. So in most of the problems you will get the right side under the compression pure compression on the left hand side you are getting the tension as negative value. But here we are getting the both the values as positive means on both of the faces there is what compression not tension hope that you all understood now after getting the values of the forces in your boundary element we have to proceed for the design of the boundary elements and here for the design of the boundary elements we have to find out how much the longitudinal reinforcement that is what your vertical reinforcements are required and how much the lateral reinforcement or shear reinforcements are required in your boundary element but before of getting into the design of this boundary element, we have to look at some recommendation of your IS 13920-2016 for the design of the boundary element. So here in the clause number 10.4.2, they have recommended that we have to design the boundary element by assuming it as an actually loaded short column. And how much the vertical reinforcement you have to provide in this boundary element is given in your clause number 10.4.3. So here minimum percentage of reinforcement should be 0.8% and maximum percentage should be what 6%. But further in respect of the practical consideration, they have recommended that maximum percentage should not exceed 4%. To avoid the conjunction so if you are taking the section of the boundary element and if you are going to provide six percent so there what there will be very large number of bars will be present so that may create the problem of conjunction there will be difficulty in placing of your concrete there will be the difficulty of the vibration of the concrete so to avoid all that problems we have to provide maximum as four percent minimum as 0.8 percent so in the light of this recommendation that we have to consider the column as actually loaded short column so due to this reason we need to look at IS 456-2000 clause number 39.3 where they have defined how to design the actually loaded short column so that we are going to consider in our proposed example so IS for 139-2016 the minimum percentage of reinforcement in the boundary element or in the short column we have to provide as 0.8% in respect of that we are going to do the calculation in the boundary element how much the area of reinforcement is required so 0.8 percent divided by 100 we are going to take a trial with a minimum percentage of reinforcement first if your strength is going to be satisfied with 0.8 percent then it will be okay if it is not okay then we will increase the percentage so 0.8 divided by 100 multiplied by 250 multiplied by 500 so it is the size of your boundary element our size of the boundary element thickness is what 250 and length is what 500 so that I am going to multiply here so we are getting the value of AST as 1000 mm square this much area of reinforcement we are going to provide now how much the ultimate compressive load carrying capacity of your column that we are going to see PU that is equal to 0.4 FCK area of concrete plus 0.6 yield strength of your steel multiplied by AST so this formula is actually given here as 456 have a look over this so we are going to use this formula to find out being the presence of this much area of reinforcement and the section size that's 250 by 500 how much the actual load carrying capacity we are going to calculate that and then that calculated actual load carrying capacity we are going to compare with the maximum compressive load here we are getting as 719.43 so if you are getting your PU value greater than this it means that 
the available capacity is more than that of whatever the load you are going to apply. At that time, we will be on safe side. So, just follow. We are going to put 0.4 multiplied by 25 multiplied by 250 multiplied by 500 is your section size minus area of steel because we want to have the only concrete area. How much the concrete area is there? So, total area minus the area of your steel. So, you are getting the net value of only the concrete plus 0.67 multiplied by 415 multiplied by 1000. Actually, here one mistake is there. So, here it is not 0.6, it is 0.67. Have a look over the, yeah, 0.67. So, that you have to correct 0.67 FY AST. Now, after doing this calculation, we are getting a value of axial load carrying capacity of your column or axial load carrying capacity of your boundary element as 1525 kN which is greater than how much the load you are going to apply. So, the load you are going to apply as 719.43. So, your capacity being the size of 250 by 500 and being the percentage of reinforcement as 0.8, your capacity is more than that of whatever the load you are going to apply. It means that our design is what safe. Largest bar diameter. Now, we are going to provide the reinforcement. So, earlier we have seen that code has recommended that maximum diameter of the bar you cannot take more than of thickness of the wall divided by 10. So, thickness is 250 divided by 10. So, maximum diameter is what? 25. Minimum diameter is what? 12. As per IS 456 2000, minimum diameter of bar in the axial loaded short column or boundary element is 12. So, that's why here I am going to provide 6 number of 16 mm diameter of bar. So, how much the area is going to become? So, area of steel on compression will be 6 number of 16 mm dia. Unit area of 16 mm dia is what? 201. So, 201. So, total area will be present in your boundary element will be 1206 mm square. Requirement was 1000. We are going to provide 206 mm square. We are going to provide extra reinforcement. So, that's a good thing. What's the problem? So, finally, in the boundary element on both of the sides, we are going to provide extra 6 bars of 16 mm dia. For the middle portion, reinforcement will be as per the earlier design. 12 mm diameter of bar at a spacing of 250 center to center that we earlier did. The calculation for the longitudinal reinforcement in the shear wall. So, in respect of that calculation, the reinforcement will be present in the middle portion and in respect of this boundary element design, the reinforcement, longitudinal or main reinforcement will be present at both of its ends. Now, with all of this, we have to proceed for the design of the confinement reinforcement or shear reinforcement or lateral reinforcement in your boundary element. Now, next, we have to design the boundary element for the confinement or lateral reinforcement. So, earlier we did the calculation for finding out how much the longitudinal reinforcement will be required in your boundary element. So, we got the answer as we have to provide the 6 number of bars of 16 mm dia as extra we have to provide at the ends of the shear wall. So, that we actually have provided. Now, next we have to find out the confinement or lateral reinforcement. So, this is actually what confinement or lateral reinforcement which is going to tie all the longitudinal bars of your boundary elements. So, how to do the calculation for this? We need to go back and we have to look at IH 13920. So, for the finding out the spatial confinement reinforcement in your boundary element throughout its height. So, this is actually the formula is given where ASH is equal to 0.05 into spacing of the shear reinforcement or confinement reinforcement, size of your confinement reinforcement, how to do the calculation for this H and how to consider this H, we will see it later. Then, FCK characteristic strength divided by your yield strength of steel. So, this is what unit area of your lateral ties or your confinement reinforcement. So, for that, we have to proceed. Now, if you are going to modify this formula, so you are getting this formula. We actually have to find out the spacing SV is equal to ASH multiplied by yield strength divided by 0.05 multiplied by H into FCK. So, basically all the things are known. Unknown is what? Only the H. So, how to do the consideration for this H? Look at your IS 13920 2016 page number 10. So, at the page number 10, you are getting the solution for finding out the H value. So, H is actually maximum of your HC and BC. So, in a boundary element, if there is suppose only 4 number of bars. So, in that situation, HC will be what? 
this outer side to outer side suppose you are going to provide your stirrup or your confinement reinforcement like this stirrup or confinement reinforcement is the same thing don't be confused okay so this is what this distance is actually your hc along the larger dimension of your boundary element consider our example it is 500 and it is 250 so this is what along the longer span of uh, your boundary element it is what hc and along the shorter span it is going to become what bc so maximum of this hc and bc you have to consider as h but when you are number of bars or more let's say suppose six number of bars are there as in our case so in that situation how to consider hc and bc so bc will be same along the shorter span of your boundary element so this will be your bc outer dimension of your confinement reinforcement now hc will be what this much will be your hc only not the full span will be what your hc only this half part you have to consider as what hc so that calculation we are going to do in our example have a look over the calculation so where h is the larger dimension of the link this is the link or lateral reinforcement measure from outer face so hc along the longer dimension of your boundary element totally is actually what 500 mm so 500 minus 2 times clear cover from both of the sides so 2 times 40 divided by 2 because it is going to be divided into 2 parts if suppose 8 number of bars are there so how many spacing will become 1 2 3 you have to divide it by 3 but actually here present only what in a row only 3 number of bars so that is what you have to divide by 2 spacing so we are getting the value of hc as 210 mm now bc nothing is there only we have to consider this part so 250 minus clear cover from both of the sides you are getting the size of the link along the width of your boundary element so it is going to become 170 mm so maximum of these two will become what 210 mm i am going to use 8 mm diameter of your link bar this confinement reinforcement we are going to use as 8 mm diameter of bar so actually two legs are present that's why we have to consider as two times unit area of 8 mm diameter of bar that is actually 8 mm dara having the unit area as 50.26 something but we are going to round round off this value by 50 mm only so 2 times 50 multiplied by yield strength of steel fe415 divided by 0.05 multiplied by h h is actually 210 multiplied by a characteristic strength as 25 so we are getting the spacing recommendation for your confinement reinforcement as 158.95 95 but it is the design requirement some detailing requirement also we have to follow for that we need to look at as 13920 so your confinement reinforcement spacing should not be more than of this following three recommendation yeah design requirement is what 158.95 in respect of design requirement you are not allowed to provide the spacing more than of 158.95 so only this re design requirement criteria if you are going to see so we will provide the spacing as 150 but we are not going to consider here as what detailing requirement detailing requirement is recommending what your spacing should not be more than of these three things so what are those we are going to calculate that also so maximum spacing will be least of the following so one third of the minimum dimension of the boundary element in your as 13920 one third member dimension of your boundary element minimum size so minimum size is what 250 250 by 500 is your size of your boundary element so minimum dimension is what 250 so 250 multiplied by 1 by third so we are getting the spacing as 83 second six times the smallest diameter of longitudinal bar so longitudinal bar in your boundary element we have taken as what 16 mm dia so six times 16 it is going to become 96 mm now last one is what your 100 mm so overall the recommendation is what minimum of uh, all these three is what 83 so have a look over this is facing 158 so among these four requirements we have to consider the minimum one so i am going to consider the minimum of uh, all these four requirements as 83 so we are going to provide the spacing as 8 mm dia at a spacing of 75 mm center to center throughout the height so 
the confinement reinforcement in the boundary element will be what 75 mm center to center remember so this is what the design for your confinement reinforcement in your boundary element as well as the longitudinal reinforcement in your boundary element in this way you have to do the complete design for the boundary element along with the actual shear wall now in the last step we have to prepare the schedule and details of the shear wall in respect of the design result so first of all we would like to write the section dimension of the shear wall so length is 4000 mm thickness is 250 mm reinforcement in the wall as vertical and horizontal so here vertical reinforcement in the shear wall will be 12 mm diameter of bar at a spacing of 250 mm center to center so these two bars will be at a spacing of 250 mm center to center or this reinforcement is needed to provide on both of the faces on each faces we have to provide this now horizontal reinforcement in the shear wall will be 8 mm diameter of bar at a spacing of 150 mm center to center thereafter the size of the boundary element here we have provided as 500 in length this is the length of your boundary element as 500 mm and thickness as equal of your thickness of the shear wall as 250 mm we have taken the reinforcement in the boundary element we have to provide as vertical 6 number of bars of diameter 16 mm so here 6 number of bars are present of diameter of 16 mm on both of the sides then horizontal reinforcement or you can say the confinement reinforcement for the boundary element we are going to provide 8 mm diameter of bar at a spacing of 75 mm center to center over all the height of your shear wall and you have to separate these links or these horizontal bars such that it will be easy to execute on site so this is what the complete detailing for your shear wall in respect of your design result and this is your complete schedule in respect of your design results hope that you all understood how to prepare the schedule and detail for your design results of the shear wall Hello everyone, welcome you all in a new ISO certified live training program Design of Substructure using CSI Safe Excel and Manual In this training program you will learn all about the concept of substructure design Commands in CSI Safe software for the substructure design Validation of CSI Safe result with your manual and advanced Excel sheets This training program will cover 4 real life projects In the first and second we will cover all the types of isolated foundation in CSI Safe software In the third real life project we will cover the raw foundation And in the fourth real life project there will be the coverage of file and pad cap design design of basement wall and at the end of this training program we will learn how to prepare the final design sheet for the site execution have a look over the features of this training daily live classes conducted by experts recording of every session can interact with expert anytime exposure to real practice as a certification of training it's five star rated training program till now more than thousand participants have benefited from this training program now you are the next